Saints. Today we're going to take this wireless relay and we're going to make it control our winch. Um, basically we're going to take the wiring harness from the winch or the remote. We're going to cut the loop where it's long enough to come underneath and we're going to mount our box right here. And um, I was wanting to mount it up here, but realistically, I don't know if I can make a bracket that goes across like these. I could probably take the two that come with this that hold the solenoid box, solenoid box, and like expand it all the way and make the remote control sit over here. But honestly, I think I'm just gonna stick with the underneath part. Kind of seems more incognito. So what we're gonna do, so we're gonna mount this guy starting off to this plate inside here like that. That way, this, the switches inside this remote relay or the relays, they can straddle the two screws that I'm gonna use to push through the, the box itself to mount to the winch plate. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, glue this to the metal lid and then we're gonna start wiring. Probably just do uh, two drops of glue. One like right there. You know what, let's just go ahead and do three. Maybe a five. Little five things of glue. Put it in. Hold down tight for probably 10, 15 seconds. Okay, it's starting to stick, so go ahead and put our glue up. And now we're gonna wire. So what we gotta do with this, um, so what I'm planning to do is have the winch wire come in the side of this box, um, which I got some grommets for that. We're gonna have him come in right here, if the box is on it, right here, and he's gonna tie into this red wire, which is gonna go to the positive on our um, terminal here. Let's just go ahead and look at it. So for the wiring, we got our power and our negative coming in, 12 volt, on this terminal. And then we got to branch off this power, we have to go into um, two of the circuits here, supplying the switch with power. And then out of the, I wanna say it's the normally, let's see, we got a diagram right here. Out of, so we come into the normally open circuit with power, and then we go out of the common to complete our circuit to our winch. So our forward is gonna be on one of these and our reverse is gonna be on one of these. And when you push the button A or B on these remotes, which is right here, it's gonna activate one of the two of these switches and it's gonna send power to that circuit. Well, the circuit on the, my winch, my rough country winch, has basically power coming in on one of these and then it has two circuits it can go and the switch on this goes one way or the other. So it just takes the 12 volt coming down this line and returns it through one of these um, two other prongs. So basically we are having our power come in, the constant 12 volt from the winch is coming into this, and then it's gonna come out of this back to the winch. Let's get to wiring. Just to note, I went to my winch and simulated where I was gonna run it and found the length that I needed. And then I added about four inches just to be safe. So we're gonna cut this thing where I'm pinching it right here and then strip it back. I got the plug uh, cut to the proper length but we need to drill our hole to the inside of this so we can feed our wire through um, to even start wiring. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna use a step bit and get to three eighths so that we can put our grommet in there and then our quarter inch cable can fit through really nice and snug and keep a good, hopefully waterproof seal. I actually did a 5 sixteenths on the step bit and then I barely um, tapered into the three eighths to um, kind of make it have a snug fit. And that actually worked um, pretty well. So 
we're gonna shove our wire through next and see how that goes. Let's try it. So we got the wire through and what we're gonna do next is we're gonna test and make sure that we know which one of these has power. I'm pretty sure it's the brown one. So let's confirm. Here's the brown and we have 12 volt. Now, just to be safe, we're gonna go and check the blue, nothing, and the black, and nothing. Okay, next test, so we're gonna see if this thing, um, by grounding out the blue one, we're gonna figure out if it goes out or in real quick. Okay, that blue went in, and black goes out so now we know which color is which we're gonna unplug it remember this is low voltage on this side all the solenoids uh, make it where the high amperage stuff doesn't come through your switch that would normally go in your cab so hence why these wires are so small is because they have low amperage so you might see a little spark if you do this test like I just did but um, you're probably not gonna hurt anything doing it in fact, I need to reel my winch back in. So if you're ever in a really desperate situation, you had a spare wire like this, you can figure out which one's hot. And then you could singe it back in. Let's, uh, I'm hard doing this one-handed on the camera. Let's get that one in there. Okay, that's out. The top one of this terminal is in. Okay, we singed her up. Put that in. I know you're not probably supposed to do this, pull it against the fair lead, but I tried making a D-ring hook for it and it just put the, it actually put the collar that uh, clamps the cable right there, down in there. Uh, that crimp sleeve that ties the um, loop, or the, ties the wire back to itself after it goes through the loop for the hook. Um, it just binds in there if I attach my hook to a D-ring, so I got it like that for now. Anyways, we did what we needed to do. So now, it's time for us to do the wiring inside this. So, let's do the wiring of this. Okay, so let me explain to you what we got going on here. So, these wires I was using, the reds, they were just too big to shove into one crimp terminal one of these guys so what i did is i have a jumper between this terminal and this terminal so all the wires inside these are hot the wire coming in the brown is in this one and it jumps to this one and this one powers these two reds on this terminal block the second red in this first terminal feeds over to the power and then last but not least well, not last, but we have our ground coming up to go under one of the self-tappers so that it has ground and that the chassis is grounded as well. But then we got our blue coming out the common going back and we got the black out of the other common going back. And that's pretty much how it rolls. Now we just need to drill some holes in this to mount it to the winch. So... Let's do that. And then we'll go out and we'll try to mount it to the winch. Um, just keep in mind, you wanna place your hole where it's in this little cavity between the antenna and the switches, or the relays, I should say. So I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna set this up, kinda get an idea of where that hole needs to be. And then I'm gonna put this guy underneath the hole when I put the self-tapper through. And then we're gonna have a second hole drawn pretty close to the wire here since it'll just be pushing down on these. And everything fits, um, I would show you, but it's kind of hard to, um, with the camera rolling and configuring it in there. But basically all I have to do is kind of just push the wires in first and then shut it like this. So let's go ahead and drill our holes and then mount it to the Jeep. So we're gonna test it real quick. I'm gonna simulate, before we uh, finish up and mount it to the winch plate, we're actually going to test it and make sure that this works. Here, I'm hitting the button. 
goes the opposite way on A, and then B brings it back in, just like that. And so we know it works. Now all we need to do is mount it to the Jeep underneath on the bottom of the winch plate. I think I'm actually gonna take it off, which is why I wanted to test it before I did, and then I'll button up this cable last but not least and kind of tie it in where it's nice and snug on the back side of the solenoid and, and power lead cables. So thank you, honey, for helping me record that. So I got my holes drilled, um, and I'm gonna place it on the winch where I plan to mount it, which is right here. And I put my 916 socket on the bolt that goes to the winch just so it's not obstructing. And then I also stuck my um, half inch hitch pin in just so I know it's not gonna be in the way too because that's where I store it and I wanna keep it that way. So basically what I'm thinking is I'm gonna get my drill bit in and I'm just gonna barely make a mark through the box where I want it to land for the first one. And then I'm gonna drill a pilot hole and I'm gonna screw it in place. Then I'm gonna move to the second hole, drill it, and screw it in place. And then I'm gonna remove one of the two bolts and ground the ground wire. And then I'm gonna put the four screws in the bottom of it and we should be wrapping this gig up. And then we'll do our final test. So, here we go. First hole is punched, but I just wanna uh, show you something before we go too far. This is the big drum side and there's like very little clearance. This is the small drum side and there's a lot more clearance. That's why I chose this side um, over the other. So now we're gonna drill our self tapper into that and we're gonna mount the box and then we're gonna drill our second hole and then it should be mounted. So as you can see, I got the self tappers in, had one fail me I should have drilled it the same size uh, or a size under the threads and I did it one smaller to see if I could get a really tight um, grab, but it was unnecessary because they got a good grab with the size slightly below the threads. So, box is on there, got it grounded, everything's ready to go. Um, I already slid it in once and it fits perfect, but... Um, I wanted to make sure you guys knew what you're looking for if you want to do this. Here is the part number for the 433 megahertz wireless switch and remote control. Mine actually came with two remote controls. Here's the spare that I'm probably going to hide somewhere in my Jeep and then use the other one as my main one. And then this case, the black project case that I used, I got from a guitar pedal website since I kind of dabble in guitar pedals too, I knew that I could potentially fit this relay inside of a 1590B case. And that's what this is. And if you use the part number that I just gave you on Amazon, you should be able to find it. If not, I will put a link to it in the description of this video. But like I said, you can fit this all in there and shut it. But the last thing that this thing probably needs that I haven't considered, one, I need to put a dab of silicone right here to keep that one from leaking. But number two, I need to get a gasket. And I'm gonna look online and make sure that there isn't a gasket already made for these project boxes. And if there is, I'm gonna buy it. If not, I'm probably gonna run really thin layer of silicone all the way along this and then shut it upon final install. But outside of that, and putting the four screws in right here, that's pretty much all she wrote. I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna take the slack wire and zip tie it to the solenoid cables here. And then we're gonna go put it on the Jeep and see if it works. So let's get to that. And final test. Looks like it works to me. And that's how it's done, people. And if you ever need to like emergency disconnect it, you can just yank out your plug here or your power source plug 
it probably wouldn't hurt if you had a fuse in there but honestly i don't know the amperage to tell you to use um i'm probably gonna leave mine power wise i'll leave the winch unplugged unless i'm going off-roading to use it just and i'll do a trial and error before i just assume that the circuit is good but a future uh, improvement on my design would be adding a small mini fuse inside that box. There's there's room for one if you used it. Um, you could probably use it uh, between the winch's power and the other, the two different crimps in there. You could use it before you hit the first crimp and then use a butt splice where it goes straight through from your power from your winch to the fuse and then into the splice where all the wires come together. But that's it people. Just a quick little upgrade you can do for just about any winch as long as it's like a simple three plug design, three prong design like mine or possibly even a four prong if it's got like a ground, a power and then the two uh, directions forward and reverse. You could probably um, do this same design and then you could actually use your ground inside your little controller from the four prong it just depends how it's designed this rough country one is pretty simple but nonetheless hope this helps hope you guys uh figure this out just make sure you have a good solid ground on your winch plate to your winch body that goes to your frame on mine i guess it's grounding through the winch itself in because i don't think the hitch mount has enough ground to um, ground it properly. Just make sure there's a good ground. Mine works, so it must have a good ground. But if it if you were having trouble, that'd be the first place I'd look before power. But you may have a power problem. Just depends. Mine on the little uh, unit. You might if you rewind back and look when we were test um, driving it the first time before I closed the box and mounted it to the plate you'll notice that it had a little LED light that lit up. Anyways, I'm rambling. So, hope you guys um, enjoyed this, and hopefully you guys do this little upgrade yourself and um, get yourself a little wireless winch control that you can use. I think the box claimed that this can go several hundred feet away. I'm doubting that, but let's just say it's got a safe 100. Well. The winch line is a 100, so there you go. 100 foot for 100 foot wireless. So there you go, y'all. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. God bless and stay safe out there, y'all. Your friend, St. Chris, out.